we're going into a renovation right now, part of my house. I'm going to show you exactly from how nasty, filthy it was to get in a point with restoration. I try to preserve as much of the appliances. Of course, it's easy to go and buy new things and just throw it away. But I think to be better for the environment, cleaning things up and also seeing how things you can restore it is also very therapeutical. Switching out the sinks, putting new shower heads and just making sure everything is like rust free, calcium free and free free and painting it and bringing it to life is very transforming, therapeutical, also rewarding at the end. When you finish it all, because I've done this one time, I posted my closet renovation that I did. It was a very small area, four by eight, and now we're doing a whole space which has the bathroom, like living area and such. So let's just dive right in. Okay, doing this small minor renovation problem. So we have, I'm fixing it. Uh, as you can see, this light is just, it looks like it's about to die out. It's all right, there was a mirror here, but fortunately, just roaches all over. So, and then this, this is the power for the mirror. Electric switch is here. Uh, what we're gonna do is actually use the Lutron lights. And I think I'm gonna go vertical, put it on the outside wall here. Because I think there's two beams here we couldn't that's why it couldn't go across. The way the Lutron works is you can set up the main here and then put wireless inside. So then I can make it all seem all seamless, go across. Uh, shower bars, we already demolished all that. The shower bar is here. Keeping them screwed in because it's pretty nice and tight. Just gonna paint over it. Uh, toilet still intact. It's just, it moves a little bit. So I gotta speak to my contractor to figure out how that goes. Uh, the power for the thing still is here. This was the towel, hand towel hanger here. Toilet paper hanger was here. Gotta patch all that stuff up. And um, door hook, look at this door. Ain't this beautiful? Gorgeous, right? I know. Handle still intact, so we should be good on that. It's a little scratched up, but it's, it's all good. Um, so we're gonna get all solid core doors. The tricky part is the hinges. I think my contractor told me what to do. We gotta get the hardcore slabs, reshape this stuff. I found the tool on Amazon to reshape this, so it seems it's easy to do, but at the same time, I'm gonna try one. If it doesn't work, he's gonna have to do it all. Uh, and then just gotta clean all this with roaches. Now my wife picked the color for the strips to be silver. I'm gonna see how all that plays out. I didn't purchase the paint yet, just, everything's just conceptual right now. <laughs> so overall, and then the vanity for, the, for the, um, the fan, for the bathroom is still intact, but the clips broke. So I ordered, I'm ordering other ones from Amazon because the one the manufacturer gave, it seems like it just keeps uh, flavoring off. For a pack of like four or five, it's like seven bucks, it's pretty cheap. Shower panel, replacing it. Now I can get one of these for like $150. It's like new, not exactly new. What happened is this piece broke, so can't really quite do that. Uh, and then I gotta take these things off. I gotta figure out how to take these things off. I think I gotta use heat. I'm gonna try that. And once my cleaning crew comes in here and, and get busy, this should look normal, and then I can get to work on everything else. Once they clean in here and Floor is clean, the walls is clean, the mold, moldings, right? The vinyl moldings is clean. Then I can just paint over everything and just make it look all brand new. So it's all cosmetics. The structure is still intact, which is good. I'm also ordering uh, new strips of these. Gotta take all the caulk out, all the edges of the shower and put new caulk in here. It shouldn't be too bad on the outside too. And I also found a door sweep that you put underneath here and so that the water goes on the inside. As you can see here, it closes, it holds, but what happens is the water should be flowing. There's nothing to make the water keep going on the inside. So I think if I get a view from here, I'd be able to tell. Bam, right? So the water potentially could just be going on over the edge, and that's not good. So the door sweep will definitely help. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this area. And bathroom should be all intact. Experimenting with the floor here. So with this floor, what I had to do, it originally looked like this. So these old tiles, or oh, but we got to get to the concrete, which is at this layer here. And but there's glue all through here. So what I did was I used a machine. Where is it? It's right over here. This machine right here, a combination of this, and use my regular drill with this bit, and just chip things away. In terms of to loosen up some of the adhesive, I did use this right here. I tried Henry adhesive remover. It helped a bit, not all the way, but it helped quite a bit. So we remove the glue. That was step one, as much as we could, and then cleaned it up. After that was the hardest part. Once we got that done, it all smoothed it out. I used. Um, See if I still have it in here. Might be the garbage. There we go. Platinum patch. It's an exterior filler, but I'm using it for the interior. Because I'm a strong believer if it works for the exterior, it's going to be perfect for the interior. That's the same thing I do for the shower. When it comes to the, the, the caulk, I use exterior caulk only. Because it's it's supposed to receive constant beat up water and all that stuff. So I use that as the interior. I tried the interior before, it didn't hold up too good. So that's what I use, that's what this white stuff is. And I use this brush right here, combination of this putty knife to get it out the can, this for the harder edges, and this for the overall. And when you Pass this through, it helps smooth out the floor so that it can get as close as flat as possible to cover all the holes. Because what we want to do is, when we put the floor in, we want to make sure that it's not moving around as much because that's what can cause the floor to crack. And then you have issues down the line. We don't want that. So, doing the best I can to fill those holes and also level this out. As you can see, I don't want to mess with the foundation beam here. This is like a beam that's hooked up from the foundation. That's supporting beam. They call it that holds the house together. So there's a reason why it's like this and we don't want to mess with it. So we got to kind of follow along with it to curve into it. And it sips, sips down through here. So that's the layer that you're seeing on top now. It's just that. Once we finish this, going to run another uh, of this tool. But instead of using the 65, we're going to use the 155. The 155 is really to get it to be so smooth. The 60 and the 40 is to get the hard, hardcore edges, right? But the 150 is what makes it very smooth. Uh, and, you know, really, really, really smooth operating over here. And then once we're done with that, smooth it out, then we're going to put a coat of this barrier here is masonry waterproof and it's uh interior and exterior which is great right and i'll make sure that this was good for molding and all that good stuff so which which is good so is that material that we we put down here the, the patch level it's mold resistance no resistance we don't want none of that stuff down here because uh it could, it could get like this in case mopping and all that stuff happens so once you put that coat it's going to be all shiny and all good it's going to be like plastic so then when we put this guy for the floor where is it this this contact cement it's going to hold on top of the plastic and we're going to bond it these floors got from Lowe's they're like a dollar fifty a square feet I think but they look almost like the real marble now here. I know it's ugly right now, but they look close alike. So, ask my wife and also my best friends, and they both suggested like I stick to that floor, and because they they they're pretty much alike. So if we do that, then we're we're solid. And I'm just doing this as a test. I don't see myself doing this throughout the whole space. It's about 700 plus square feet of space and. 
this took me about two days. I mean, it would be faster when you're doing a bigger area, but it's just really time consuming. Plus, I, I would hire a lot of help to help me get through it. This is just for me to see if the material holds. If the floor holds, everything is all good, it's all intact, and that's the floor I'm gonna install for now. Eventually down the line, I'm gonna do ceramic. So that's the floor, and I'll keep you posted on that. Next, we have this area here. As you can see, this is just a sink, but we, we're gonna make it look pretty. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of roaches down here. Demolished everything so everything can get cleaned out. Uh, unscrew all this stuff. And all took off all the hinges, even the cabinets in the kitchen too. Like this is the cabinets in the bathroom. Took those off, the hinges off. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that in a second. But as you can see, uh, there's a vent here. This is just so that way we can get any air up and out of here. The walls is all beat up and everything. So this is all that grease. We gotta get all this grease off. So what I'm gonna do is soak all this inside of a uh, I bought a can of Pepsi. <laughs> gonna try to shrink can of Pepsi, gonna pour it, not for drink, right? This is how we know this stuff is really bad. I'm gonna pour it inside of here and put all the screws and these hinges inside of there. Now they might lose some of the looseness, so I'm gonna have to spray WD-40 on it again once I'm done. But the goal is to put this so we can renew all this stuff. And then my plan for the cabinets, I already bought uh, contact paper, but it's it's that wood grain finished contact paper, all black. And in order for me to install it on this, I'm gonna have to take apart this. This is a floating vanity. So I'm gonna have to unmount it from the wall. Need, need someone's help to hold that because this uh, countertop here, it's very heavy. And then once we do that, then everything could be all cleaned. And put the new contact paper in this wood, never have to get rid of it because the other trick is to install another vanity, but it, it, it costs, it can cost a little bit to do that. The contact paper is like 30 bucks. It just, it just requires men labor, which is the equivalent of me buying a new sink anyway, and I'll probably spend the same amount of time putting pieces back together versus this one. I could unscrew pieces of it and piece it together, because I think this came all together, and I didn't have to uh, take it apart. So that's that. So we're going to get cooking on the Pepsi and hinges strip right now. I'm about to pour as much of the screws and hinges in there and let that sit for a couple of days and see what happens. And if it oxidizes, get rid of all this rust, then that's the stuff y'all be cleaning your body. That's not good. I don't do it, but hope you're not doing that too. Yep. So that's the project. This is y'all again back to the grind. And looking forward to sharing a lot much more with you. Peace and love. Trust in Jesus. Have an amazing one. Always trust in Jesus for that guidance, the wisdom he has blessed me with to be able to think about all this. Although I received a lot of help, he gave me the right help at the right time. I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. Awesome.